going back and watching some of my favorite Dark Souls 1 PvPers, I noticed everybody kept a bow on them back then. Um, and the net code was so bad in Dark Souls 1 that you couldn't reliably dodge an arrow on reaction. Um, on top of that, everyone used poison arrows. And poison resistance in Dark Souls 1 was so, so tiny, so minuscule, that you you could poison somebody in two or three shots uh, with an arrow. So in the spirit of that, I've started keeping a, a short bow on my character. Now poison resistance being what it is in Dark Souls 3, and the net code being what it is in Dark Souls 3, uh, it's, it's a little more difficult. But the short bow definitely has its uses. Uh, also the composite bow. Now I went with the short bow in this character because the composite bow seems to be more for uh, quality builds. Uh, we'll get into all that later. But this thing gives you a ranged option that's not the Avalon. It weighs one unit, I think, maybe one and a half units. Um, we'll get into the, the finer details later. But I have grown to love keeping a short bow on me um, for this character. For others, I would keep the composite bow. Now, not only does it allow you to apply pressure at any range, but it also gives you a nice roll catch weapon that most people would never consider a roll catch weapon. This thing, the move set, this is the weapon art, which is really good for people who have low HP, like if you break tiers. The backstep R1 and the rolling R1, or just attacks, I guess, they come out very fast. Now, if you just hold the bow, a lot of people will try and roll into you to attack. And you can do a roll catch with the bow, and a lot of times you'll get a headshot. On top of that, you can equip the Leo ring and do counter damage. Um, now, I don't recommend doing that as like a viable winning strategy, but the bow allows you to play mind games, and any weapon that lets you play mind games immediately just goes through the roof insofar as how much I'll enjoy it. I've been working a little bit on my unlocked play, so if you notice me remaining unlocked from people, uh, that's why. Um, I've been going, I've actually been playing, I've got a Dark Souls 1 playthrough going on on Twitch right now, and I'm finding against people who dead angle, playing unlocked is super important. And I kind of was curious if I could take some of the lessons I learned from Dark Souls 1 into Dark Souls 3. So, at this point, while he's fighting this Silver Knight, I can switch to the short bow, and that's the end of it. So you can see the short bow gives you a nice option uh, for ranged attacks on a melee build. You could also be using, like in that situation, you could have used the black bow of Ferris or one of the other bows that does more damage. Actually, we'll go ahead and take a look at the stats here. Uh, we're getting 138 base damage out of the short bow at plus 8. The, this is a level 59 build. You can see the stats on the right there. Um, we're getting 47 damage out of the D dex scaling. Uh, 254 AR altogether. Now, on a dex build, I go for the short bow. On a quality build, I would go for the composite. Although I believe the composite bow is a bit heavier than the one unit uh, that this thing's rocking. Maybe it was it two units. I think it was two. But yeah, the composite bow is a little heavier. So, I might have already said this, but if you see me playing Unlocked a lot, I know I play Unlocked a lot in this fight. It's because I'm still working on uh, backstabs and punishing Estus uh, with backstabs. So, as an invader, one of the things that you're going to be faced with all the time, and you already know this, is multiple people. What's great about the short bow is it gives you an option to quickly kill people 
when you're being pressured from another direction. So this phantom, he's out of uh, Estus. He has no health, but I'm being pressured by this uh, Ultra Great Sword. Now I can run in and try and kill him, but if he swaps to, you know, a regular straight sword or whatever weapon he was using, that's going to be a lot more difficult. The short bow allows me to just chuck a rolling R1, do 46 damage, nowhere near him, and I can play defensively against the Ultra Great Sword. I can be dodging the Ultra Great Sword, but aiming for the low health Phantom. That's one of the reasons any of the the, the uh, fast firing bows work so well in invasions. Despite the fact they're not doing a whole lot of damage, they're still an excellent, excellent finishing weapon. And because I was able to kill him with out chasing him down and, and not having to actually target him like only it made dodging the ultra great sword so much easier I'm denied that backstab but immediately given this one backstab Jesus he's like karma it, it always works out <laughs> So, now, we touched on the damage earlier, but a lot of that has to do with what arrows you're using. I'm typically, typically going to be using feather arrows for long distance shots, and dark arrows for shots that I need to track people that are running, rolling, etc. Now, for a roll catch, you can go with the feather arrows or the large arrows and do a little more damage. Um, for people who are running, I would go with the dark arrows. So when I invade, this guy has a phantom who had immediately returned home. He's fighting this thing, I, and you can see I'm kind of just kind of chilling, seeing what's going to happen. Um, and then he makes a mistake and uses a seed. So first of all, you can always tell whether or not a person invades based on their use of seeds. This is a terrible use of a seed of the giant tree. You've already got the monster pissed off at you. you. You're the one that hit it last. Using a seed is not going to magically make it hate me. Um, and I'm just kind of standing still, uh, letting the monster stay mad at you. You can tell this guy doesn't invade. People who invade know how to use seeds, because they know when they work. Whereas hosts, a lot of the people that are complaining about how they nerfed the giant seed are people who just indiscriminately use them and don't understand how it's supposed to apply pressure in a fight anymore. But since he had a phantom and I'm expecting he'll try and summon it back, and since he tried to use a seed on me, uh, I decide we're not going to show this guy any mercy. So the short bow gave me an excellent option while the seed was in use. I could still apply, apply pressure and I didn't have to get close enough to draw the aggro from that horrible fucking monster there. Now, one of the greatest things about the short bow is it allows you to play mind games. And any weapon that does that, like I said, any weapon that allows me to fuck with my opponent's head just immediately shoots up the ranks insofar as my love for it. You see me catching some of his rolls with the bow. Now, if I had... I've, I've actually very recently broke myself of equipping the Leo Ring, but because I've taken to this weapon, um, I'm going to start probably using it again because you get a lot of counterattacks with this, and you can do serious damage uh, with the Leo Ring counterattack damage with the bow and arrow. But... When I say mind games, what I'm talking about is you're getting hit, you know, 15, 20 times by just little arrows that just do a little bit of damage here and there. Roll catch. And it makes you think that, you know, you're free from any... It, it, first off, it'll piss you off because you're just taking all this little damage and it adds up over time. It's annoying. But also... I'm not using a real, quote-unquote, real weapon, so you can feel like you have the advantage insofar as 
uh, equipment goes. But this is all part of the plan. Basically just trying to get people riled up. And this thing is beautiful about that. So now he's pissed off. Not only is he pissed off, he's swinging that axe around without care. And he starts summoning another phantom. All he wants is blood. And he shall have it. Short of an unupgraded dagger, there's no other weapon I can think of that would annoy the absolute piss out of people like the short bow. And because of that, I love it. <laughs> now here's a great example of a short bow working wonders in a fight. This is a caster who's cast rapport on the deacons there. Casters have to split their Estus, which sucks for them, and, and I feel like that's kind of a bullshit design decision, but I'm not working at FromSoft, so I don't know what to tell you. But, having said that, with their Estus being split, a lot of times they won't have a lot of regular Estus, because they're using mostly Ashen, and they'll, they'll rely on spells to, to heal their damage. Because of that, the short bow was able to just make real quick work of that dude. Uh, he was cast in rapport, so staying away from the deacons was priority number one, and the bow and arrow was able to finish him off. Now here I've went and bought some poison arrows. So I'm using one of my backup weapons, which is the poison harp, which isn't going to do a lot of damage anyway. But I typically only use it against turtles. So it gets through the shield, it wasn't going to do a lot of damage anyway, but it's also inflicting poison. And I love inflicting poison on turtles because they have to let their guard down to eat a blossom, uh, I'm sorry, a blossoming uh, moss clump or actually just a regular moss clump. But there you can see, between the poison arrows and the poison harp, I'm able to inflict poison on him fairly quickly. And now that's something he has to worry about for the rest of this fight. Uh, against turtles, this is, you know what I mean, like poison is, People who turtle up, typically, in my opinion, um, just, I assume, I'm assuming here, but people that turtle up like that, uh, it's hard for their brains to keep up with um, too much stuff. So poison just gives you something that they have to think about besides holding L1 and when to press R1. Now they're having to manage their health, now they're having to manage uh, whether or not they have time to eat that blossom, or I'm sorry, that moss. This guy here, you see me going unlocked, I'm expecting uh, a backstab, I'm trying to get an unlocked backstab on him when he heals. He's clever, he's clever, in that he wants to hit me a few times before he heals, but he's not doing enough damage to force me away from him for a long period of time. This guy was in the act of summoning another phantom when I found him, um, so that's why I show him no mercy before you guys start sending me comments about... All y'all haters want to talk about I'm not going easy on the solo host who's fighting the hard monster. I believe it was uh, Astarva that said every host is a summoner that just hasn't summoned yet. In this situation, I spawned in just in time to see that this was exactly that sort of thing. If I had spawned in 10 seconds later, and he had been unable to summon the phantom, I wouldn't have known that until it was too late and I'd already like shown him some mercy. So here I'm making good use of the running R1, it's very fast, and the dark arrows, uh, they have the nice tracking. It's almost like fucking, uh, like a homing arrow. You will be surprised at how well they track if you didn't know this already. Here, I'm able to shoot him enough that I scare him away from a summon sign. On my backstab punish video, I parry you left me a comment that said you could do this unlocked, so I decided to give it a shot here. Don't ask me how the fuck I pulled it off. Um, <laughs> I tried again, and I actually tried it several times while I was recording footage for this. I wasn't as able I wasn't able to get it as reliably as I was with the unlocked backstabs, and as you'll see, that's one of the backstabs right there that I would have been unlocked for, and I feel like. I feel like I just have better luck 
um, actually landing the backstab. I think I get another one, another partial backstab, as I'll call it, right here at the end of these stairs. Yeah. That one was unlocked, though, so... I don't know. Still have work to do, I guess. But that will do it for me. That will do it for the short bow. I hope I've sold you on it. It's meta as fuck. Go get you a short bow, son. Uh, quiet resolve gesture. <laughs>